Welcome to the podcast, Kate. How are you? I'm really excited to be here today. Thank you so much for asking me. Of course. I'm so excited for this conversation. We've been trying to plan it pretty much all year. (laughs) It feels that way anyway. So it's so nice to finally be here and have this conversation. Um, But it feels like perfect timing for what we're going to be talking about. And then the time of year as well, I think it's just like definitely worked out this way. So people can get this like guidance around the end of the year to step into 2024 and just really know what it's like to connect to their intuition. Yeah, absolutely. It's such an important topic and one that I'm really excited to share. And yeah, divine timing at play as to when this has finally happened. So we're here. (laughs) Yay. Yes. And you're like the guru of intuition. And I just feel like I've learned so much from you. That's why I was like, I have to get you on here to talk about this and to talk about connecting to guides and the archangels, because it's just such your zone of genius. Like you're just so connected. So this is just going to be so cool. I would love to start the conversation before we get into who you are and all the things with a self-love ritual that you love to practice. Yeah. So when you sent through this question, I was like, what is it? What am, what am I really consistent with? And I am a single mom and a business owner that owns two businesses. So my life is very full and it means that the opportunity for dedicated ritual has been really wavering for me this year. And so I was thinking about, you know, what can I share as a consistent practice for me that allows me to come back in and it's, it's the theme of intention. So I can um, be in between clients and go, oh, I really need just a cup of green tea to like get me through. And I can be really intentional with saying that this is a cup of tea for me. Um, I've been doing lots of school pick up and drop offs and yeah, using that drive as an intentional ritual practice of like either listening to ceremonial music, um, chanting, like if you ever want to pull up beside me to set the traffic lights, I might just quieten down a little bit. But yeah, using um, intention as the ritual so that I'm able to transform any menial practice that I have to do into something really special for self-connection. And yeah, so that was my little one for you. I love that. And I feel like that's such a beautiful self-love ritual because so many people do lead these busy lives where they're balancing so many things and intention is just so powerful. And I love the part around like the car, right? Because it's so easy to just have the radio on because that's just what automatically comes on or to just like put a podcast on to like try and turn your mind off while you're mindlessly driving somewhere. But just being intentional with those pockets of time allows for you to then show up as a better parent, a better facilitator, a better partner, all the things. And I just love that self-love ritual. It's like maybe making your entire day a ritual, not just having like a little ritual. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. And then it was alleviating any guilt that I was feeling for not doing the practices that I've been doing over uh, over 10 years. Yeah. Um, Going, okay, I'm in a different phase in my life where I don't have the same luxury of time and space that I once did. And yeah, then coming at it from a different perspective instead of just trying to fight against it. It's actually surrendering to the phase that I'm in now and and going that way. Yeah. And I feel like collectively it's such a theme right now. I'm even noticing with like clients with telling them how to self-care afterwards sessions. I'm like, you know, finding the pockets of time in the moments where you're in the shower, like being slower in the shower, intentionally washing your hair or like the car thing, like life is just so busy and we are sort of conditioned to believe that it's, you know, wrong of us to not take 10 minutes every single morning to meditate and then 10 minutes every morning, 40 minutes every morning, not to do yoga or whatever it might be. Mm. But when you do weave it in, in this way, it just like, like you just said, it completely alleviates that guilt and just allows you to stay on path. And I just think that's so powerful. So amazing. (laughs) Um, I would love to now sort of jump into your journey. You, I know like you've had, you know, you've had a journey into this world and I've, I've heard you speak about it in circles. I would love if you could dive into this a little bit just so people can like get to know who you are, but also see that if they are someone who's like right now, say stuck in corporate or stuck in like a lifestyle that they're not so much enjoying, like it doesn't have to end there. I feel mm-hmm. like you're such an inspiration for that. So Yes. Yeah, thank you. Well, yeah, it's interesting because I think one of the things that I love sharing when I'm teaching women how to connect with their intuition and how to activate their psychic senses 
is this um, concept that it's something that's available to everyone. And so I'm a, a prime example of someone that has ended up where I am now through the practice, through trial and error, through not necessarily coming into this world as a super switched on kid you know we often see babies where we're like oh yeah they're a wise old soul and um you know really um lots of psychics and mediums have had those experiences from being a young child where they their psychic senses have just come in switched on and they, they don't switch off whereas for a lot of people we have grown up uh, we grow up we grow up in a society or a family where um our intuitive thinking isn't valued in the same way that our rational or logical thinking is. And so um, I grew up really, uh, really studious as a high achiever. Um, and yeah, everything that I did in my life was logical and critical thinking and all of these um, beautiful skills that were instilled upon by my father in particular and my schooling. Um, and so it made that part of my awareness like really hard to break as well. And so as I started to have more intuitive awakenings or leaning towards that, it was like, oh, I've got to like let go of the rational mind and jump into intuition. And now it's much more of a balanced approach between the two. It's recognizing that the rational mind and the logical mind is here for a reason and a, and a purpose. And it's not about, um, you know, not using it. It's actually about bringing the, the rational uh, thinking to the intuitive sensations and feelings and then based on the information that both provide that you have a bigger picture to make life decisions. Um, and so I, I had my spiritual awakening, uh, would have been maybe, I can't even think of what year we're in, a good ten, over 10 years ago. And um, on the, on the cusp of that, it was actually like everything in my world falling apart. And so I was work, working in corporate. I was highly stressed. I had hormonal issues. Um, I went to see a doctor and would go down the mainstream medical stream. And it was, um, you know, sleeping medication, uh, depression uh, medication, um, going on the pill to try and like fix my hormones instead of mask them and everything was just this is the way that your life will be for the rest of you know this is what you need to be on and yeah I just had this natural curiosity at that point to um, discover more about natural health and I was working with um, a traditional Chinese uh, medicine doctor and yeah just I, I just immersed myself in health and wellness from this natural perspective and I studied to be a health coach at that point as well. So this was 2013. So that was 10 years ago. And I just had this like underlying curiosity about spirituality and intuition, uh, but it wasn't really for public consumption or something that I was really willing to share about. So I ended up very privately mentoring with a professional psychic. And in those early days, it was really like paying her to provide me with the guidance and the answers to help me have a, a bigger understanding of my life and where I was headed. And I just couldn't get enough of it. And in this relationship um, with her, she, she would often test me and she'd say things like, you know, you can do this too. Like, what do you think about this? And I would be in the back of my mind, no, that's why I'm paying you to tell me. <laughs> and, you know, it took a long time to learn how to trust myself, um, but she was a fabulous teacher at, at providing tangible practices to um, increase that skill set. And she was a very, um, you know, very typical psychic medium who had all of these really early experiences and she was so switched on and that still wasn't quite available to me in the same way, but it was her belief and, and the way in which she teaches that, it's teaching everyone to practice in this way. And so, as I mentioned, it's it's that practicing um, and using myself as the guinea pig. Um, and eventually I, I brought in um, energy work and, and spirituality into my coaching business. I kind of moved away from the health coaching and yeah, just allowed for this part of my life to be more public, to you know allow it to be a part of who I am in the world and not just what I do. And that's kind of where the big shifts and the big changes happened for me.
Yeah. Amazing. I never knew that about you, that you did like the health coaching at the very beginning. And I think that's that whole, like there was so many nuggets of wisdom there. I was like, oh my gosh, like the weaving of the masculine and the feminine, you know, like the, the structure and the doing and like finding that balance of still having structure, still taking action, but doing it from a space of surrender. I think that's such a beautiful message that you brought through there. Um, so thank you so much for sharing that. And also it's such a huge thing that people do um, struggle with is very much that self-trust piece, especially when it comes to listening to intuition, right? And like you said, the beginning of your journey, you go to a doctor for help, for su- support, because that's what we do. And you're instantly just given like a bunch of pills instead of being told like, you know, what is your body asking of you? Or how can we shift your lifestyle? It's more just like, okay, let's just like stop there. This is how it is now. So that in itself creates such like distrust in our body because we think that it's us that there's something wrong with, not our environment or not our work or whatever it might be. So the fact that you pushed past that and just listened to your intuition, even that early on when it was like probably just a niggle of a feeling, not like as strong as it is right now. And that's been able to lead you to now, like the woman that you are and the work that you do. I think that's just like such a prime example of listening to that gut instinct, even when it just feels like it's so tiny that no one else can, you know, no one else could hear it just keep Mm. following that yeah yeah that's right and one of the big practices that I encourage my clients to work with is through the lens of hindsight Mm. so once I started working with my psychic senses I was able to reflect back in times in my life where I was working with my intuition without realizing that's what it was so I, I did forget to mention that when I was in high school I was studying business I was top of the class for accounting economics and the day before we had to submit what we wanted to study at uni, I just, I had this like feeling wash over me and I went to my parents' bookshelf and I didn't know it, but my mum studied psychology at uni and I pulled out an old textbook and just started reading about the dream state and psychology wasn't a subject when I was at high school. I didn't know anything about it. I read that and I was like, oh, no, I'm going to study psychology at uni and changed It was like an intuitive thing that was like so overpowering that it was strong enough to just be able to confidently say that in the face of my parents, uh, my teachers. I'd won this bursary for finances to go towards studying business and I didn't want to do that. Um, And so there there was, you know, that was a big uh, moment that I didn't know what it was at the time. And then I've had lots of little ones like... um, Oh, it was like a few months out before I was meant to get married and I had this really weird dream that my wedding dress didn't arrive and the next morning I woke up and I was like, well, I think I'm just going to call them and double check. And sure enough, this was in the days of fax machines. The, um, the place in America that does the wedding dress has never got the fax and it was too short of a time to get it over here. But at least I had like four weeks to resolve this rather than like, you know, cutting it. On really the day. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there, there was a lot of evidence that, that I had access, which we all do, mm. to something that may feel like, you know, a little bit of a niggle. And sometimes they can be a feeling or a sensation or a dream that's so profound that, that this curious part of us will act upon it anyway. Mm. And the more that we can build up that evidence bank that there is something else that we're tuned into or can tune into and that it plays out in a certain way, it's help. It's helping to appease the mind mm. so that when we do come across a situation in our lives where the mind may be wanting to keep us safe and so we feel fear about something and the intuition is saying, no, let's do this thing together, like let's, let's break out of our comfort zone. And so sometimes we receive... Um, you know, contrasting information between the mind and the intuitive heart Mm -hmm. and the practice of giving the mind trust and faith to follow the intuition comes from like building this trust Mm -hmm. and confidence in the intuition, sometimes over the mind or sometimes in support of the mind or sometimes the mind has to come in and support the intuitive I really, really like how you brought in that piece around hindsight. And it even got me quickly flashing into memories of, oh my gosh, 
It's so true. That's how you really get to see how powerful you are as an individual with your intuition, because it's usually not in the moment where you see it. And I think that's where so many people get caught up because they in the moment kind of are like, well, how do I know if it's my intuition? And it is just about following that feeling, building that evidence along the way, not like, you know, expecting it all to just work out. It's about taking those tiny little risks of like, oh, I think this is my intuition. I'm going to follow that. Mm -hmm. And then coming to a space where you can look back and go, oh, how am I working my dream job or doing this or have these people around me or whatever it might be. So that hindsight piece is so powerful. And I hope everyone listening, like really just sink it, like let that sink in. And like right now, as you're listening, just think back to times where you've trusted your intuition and it can even be crazy things, right? With like, just like, I know I'm going to get a car park right there. You drive there and someone's backing out like little things like that. Or it could be huge things. Like I feel like my flat's going to get canceled. So I'm just going to sleep in today or like, you know, things like that. I think that's really cool. The hindsight piece. Yeah. And it's really important that when we start to build a relationship with our intuition that we do practice in the areas of our life where it is low risk Mm. because that gives us permission to just play around see how it works oh I I knew that was going to happen but it but I interpreted it slightly wrong where did I where did my interpretation kind of go off track here so that by the time it really counts to the big big choices that it's much easier to do when there is a major consequence. So one of the, the, there have been two big instances in my life where I've had to follow the voice of my intuition over rational thinking and logic. And the only reason that I was able to follow through with those is because I had 10 years under my belt of of understanding this. And, you know, one of them was, so I I grew up in, in, Brisbane in Queensland and my ex-husband and I moved down to to Melbourne for eight years we had our daughter down there and we were really settled in Melbourne we loved it and we would fly back up to Brisbane with we would alternate staying at our individual parents house with our daughter and someone would stay back in Melbourne with the dog and this was towards the end of 2019 he was in Brisbane visiting uh, his family with my daughter I was at home back in Melbourne and I just had this big rush of feeling a sense of urgency around moving back to Queensland and not knowing why and he returned and he's like I don't know why but I think we need to move back and he wasn't or isn't very intuitive or spiritual but it was like this confirmation of a feeling that I was feeling and my my rational mind was like oh you guys are going to have another baby and you're going to need to be closer to family. So it, the, my rational mind had to make sense of the situation and there was this feeling of urgency. So we didn't really get to say goodbye to anyone in Melbourne. We stayed for Christmas and then we moved to the Sunshine Coast in January 2020. And then COVID unfolded and Melbourne got hit really hard and I was like, ah like that was the feeling and my logical mind at the time that this all happened could have easily said no you've got jobs and careers and family and a house and friends like why why would you move your parents could come down and and help you as they did with the first child like I could have rationally explained that feeling away and so it was a major risk for us especially you know uprooting just everything and, and, and doing so, so quickly. And there was a second instance uh, last year where, and I don't advise this for everyone, but I intuitively felt that it was time for my marriage to come to an end. And I didn't have a whole lot of rational or logic basis for that because he's a great guy. And, you know, we, we had been together for 15 years and it wasn't a bad marriage but this feeling of like oh that there was some reason behind it because you know I guess the best way that I could have articulated it to friends and family was that I felt like we'd really grown apart and in order for us to continue evolving and growing we would have to do so separately and so it was a big call like yeah. just uprooted my entire life you know my my daughter as well um and you know I can look back now and and say after 18 months it was definitely the right choice for both of us um and so he's he's remarried now and um my daughter has this beautiful stepmom but you know when she's at their place it gives me permission to do my spiritual work and the soul work that I'm here to share and so it's it's been a gift 
But those big life choices, even deciding to leave corporate, you know, if the time was right for me, you know, we can't just make that by using a pendulum. Should I leave my job? The pendulum says either yes or no. Those big decisions of the intuition require lots of supporting evidence as well for the mind. So we don't have to just tune into our intuition, ask the question once and receive the answer once and act. We can say, if this is right, can I see a sign? You know, if this is right, can someone else come and confirm this for me? And asking for all the information before we make a decision. And a really important point sometimes is that when we feel an intuitive um, epiphany come over us, sometimes we also get confused between importance and urgency. Mm. When the importance comes through in our human mind that it's attached to timelines and outcomes, we can receive the importance of something and think we have to act now. Mm. And so in, in the instance when I had to move, you know, it was really checking in, was that real urgency or was that importance? And there was both for me. But in other decisions, like you might receive that epiphany of like, this isn't the work that I'm here to do. It's, you know, I'm going to have to leave my corporate job. And trusting in that may not mean I'm just going to quit tomorrow, but it may mean starting to go, okay, well, if it's not this, what else is out there for me? Can I start to receive signs and symbols and, you know, information in my body that confirms what I'm feeling? Yeah, I love that point too, because I think that's where a lot of people unconsciously go wrong with working with the intuition. And that's why they sort of put it on the back burner and think like it's a load of BS because they don't understand that piece around you can get an intuitive nudge, you can get a feeling, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's right now. And I have my own you know, iterations of that throughout life. But one that came to my mind was when I was working in um, like a retail job and I knew that that was not the life ahead of me. I'd just been promoted to the role, like a manager role that I've been like wanting for so long. And as soon as I got promoted, I got like this inkling of like, okay, now redirect. And it was kind of like, but you've, you've just got the position that you've been wanting and like why you know and then that's when I started my journey of studying Bowen therapy and now I'm in this realm of my running my own business and doing this but it wasn't about the getting the inkling going straight to the job going I don't want this position anymore throwing it all to the ground and then being left with nothing it was the okay like the excitement's there. I know I'm here for more. How can I follow this? But at the same time, just allow my human to be a human and work a human job for now until it's ready to like step completely onto my soul path. And you know, when the time, because you build that evidence, like you've been speaking into, you do get to a stage where you actually just know it's a risk, but it's safe. It's a risk, but it's not, you're going to lose your house. It's a risk, but you're not going to be left with no money in the bank. And like, you know, no food on the table. You definitely get to that space with your intuition where you just know it's right mm. from the evidence. Yeah. Yeah. And even for some people, I've mentored lots of women who've who've tuned into like a massive leap of faith. Mm. And it's often, it's often the ending of one job to start some service work. And it feels like the the leap is just massive. And you know, there's this invitation that we're co-creating in real time with the universe and so if that leap of faith feels too big we can always ask for a stepping stone can I have an interim job so for me when I, I left the marriage I had to leave the family home and I needed a rental in a crazy market that was suitable enough for the work that I needed to do and so it was this like stepping stone and, you know, feeling like, okay, I can be satisfied that I know that this isn't forever, but it's it's where I need to be now. And so even sometimes we have this belief that we have to have figured out what we want in order to let go of what we, we don't want. And really it can be this acknowledgement that I've outgrown this, you know, this isn't feeling right for me anymore because I'm opening and expanding and inspired by something else. But, you know, I don't need to know what that other thing is exactly, what the business name is going to be, what, you know, what I need to study at uni exactly. There is permission for us always to course correct and to just trust that, you know, even when I studied the health coaching and then the psychology degree, I went in 
you know, my, my business ended up shifting to just coaching women with stress and um, emotional issues and doing that from this physical lifestyle and the mental perspective. And you could say now, like, my true aligned soul work is, is far more of the energy healing and the psychic um, readings, but none of the things that I tried in order to get here have are wrong they they've all supported this journey so that I can come at the guidance that I receive intuitively from my clients from this well-rounded perspective right. of the mental health and and the physical lifestyle so you know we don't have to get it right all the time it can actually be looking at it from this perspective of not like focusing our attention really honed into this one thing, but like where else in my life can I expand? And so it might be that, you know, you're looking at doing service work in the world, um, but you just feel naturally drawn to doing like um, some clay classes and learning how to make pottery and the process of, um, being inspired by something and turning it into physical form. So when we're creating, that process applies not only to anything that's artistic, but birthing a business, you know, birthing an online program, birthing a podcast, um, you know, birthing um, just anything that is an inspired idea and then you being the creator that births it all. So from that perspective, it's always like I always say to my clients, all roads lead to Rome. So there is this like feeling that we can never really get it wrong because any choice that we make that feels aligned, even if it's not the end point, it's part of the journey. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And we all walk our own individual journeys, right? And whatever the stepping stones along the way, whether they're big, small, uncomfortable, comfortable, they are always going to lead you and give you like the tools, like you just said about the pottery class, right? Like Every little thing that you journey through in life, whether it feels in the moment like it's really hard or it feels in the moment like it could not at all be linked to your purpose, it it does come to a space where you are just like, oh, thank goodness I did that. Thank goodness I had that relationship. And you come to the space of gratitude of the journey because it's always mm-hmm. going to be unique to you and it's always going to give you the codes that you need to get to what you've come here to be. So I love that. I love this whole conversation. I feel like people are going to get so much out of it, especially at this time of year when it's so easy to sort of give in to like all the stuff going on. It's like just listening to your heart space, like listening to intuition is so powerful. I would love to move into a little bit about how you work with the archangels. Um, If you are open to like open up this conversation, I think it's really cool how you work with the archangels. I've received from you, I think twice with you doing a reading with, yes, the archangels. And even like now I could listen back. And every time I listen back to them recordings, I'm just like, it's almost like it doesn't matter what timeline I'm currently in. It always applies to something that's going on. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Like really powerful work. So yeah. How did you get into working with archangels? What does it even mean to work with archangels? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So after I mentored with the psychic, it was really the capacity for me to use those non-physical senses. So we often think of like clairvoyance, which is clear seeing, clear cognizance, clear knowing, clear sentience, which is clear sensing, so sensing within the body. Um, And then there's other ones around touch and sight um, and sound um, and smell. And so once we're, we're tuned into those, we can be really clear about when we're communicating or tuning into something that is of energy or spiritual nature so we can tune into our soul or our highest self our intuition us we could tune into our spirit guides um, that are assigned specifically to guide us animal spirits um, even guardian angels who were specifically assigned to us and then yeah it was kind of in the same way that that my work evolved when I just come across something that really catches my eye and um, Shananda is my angel mentor and she um, has a series of programs for you to learn how to learn about the archangels and know what their energy feels like so that you're able to use those psychic senses to connect in with something other than yourself um, and yeah so at the moment now I'm doing level three which is light leadership so she begins with a pl- pl- preliminary program called the angel aura where you connect with the, um, I don't know like 
14 different archangels and the subtleties of their energy and, and what they support with. Lots of people know Archangel Michael, for example, for energy protection. But they, they, are all, they all have like their little themes. Um, and, yeah, so understanding who they are and then level one was this um, practice of, of learning how to channel them in readings for clients and then level two was kind of expanding that out and, and level three is about leadership in this area and yeah it's very different um, when you're connecting into something that that isn't yourself mm -hmm. so um, I would notice that when I connect in sometimes the languaging was slightly different I would feel a sense of word where I was like we're gonna have to look that one up in a dictionary just <laughs> to make sure I'm really clear on what that what it means um, energetic protection, I feel like I just need to say very briefly, is really important here so that you can be clear when channeling and connecting to something other than yourself, that you are connecting to something that is of divine love and divinity and purity. Um, and so, that, you know, I learned practices to ensure that that was the case. And then it's like fostering a relationship with a whole heap of new people. And they kind of have all different energy quirks and different feelings about them so some of the archangels are masculine some have more of a feminine energy and so the more that you tune into the subtleties you could begin by saying okay yeah it feels feminine I'm seeing this color or it feels like that she has a message around this area and so again a lot of trial and error um, a lot of practicing in the in the programs to you know because it's through the practice that we build out that skill set and yeah so the way the programs were really about teaching how to do channeled angel readings, which I do offer and you've received. But the more that you do the work with the angels, the more that you're able to access their support and their guidance in all areas of your life. Mm -hmm. So I do also work as an energy healer. Um, and whether the clients realize it or not, I'm often tasking various archangels to do components of the energy work that I'll have to do on a client. Um, holding the space for me if I'm having to do a really big clearing of some nasty stuff on yeah. someone. Like, there are four archangels I call upon and I get them in the four corners of the room to spread out their wings to create like this mm. wall around me. I use them um, for house clearings. I I use them in my personal life. And it was so interesting because when we were talking at the start about not having the time and the space to sit down and have a proper meditation practice. When you foster a relationship with the archangels, they're always around you. So you can be like just completely mind blank, just driving somewhere without really thinking about anything. And you and it's like they'll catch me when, when there's a space. Mm. So sometimes when I'm having a shower, I'll like receive a piece of guidance or while I'm washing the dishes because the relationship is always available rather than the practice of actually having to sit down. And that's through years of practice in working with them. But their messages always come from a place of love. They will never tell you what to do and they can't interfere with your free will choice. So it means they respect your divine sovereignty, which is why they won't tell you what to do. So if someone was to put in uh, an angel reading with a question, should I leave my job? The archangels will never say, yes, you should. What happens is they send messages around what it could mean if you left your job and what it could mean if you stay. And then obviously you in your divine free will choice can sum up those. And sometimes like the energy is glaringly different between staying and going mm -hmm. or whatever the question is. Like you can see that, that they're showing you that there is a, a quote unquote better path. Um, and the other thing is really important is that the archangels won't predict the future. So this is why you mentioned, Tanika, that your, your readings, no matter what timeline you're on, feel current. Because what the angels, the archangels are doing, their um, they're readings span across all timelines based on your free will, individual choices. What the messages come through and tune into are your soul lessons, your soul purpose, your soul gifts, so that it's applicable no matter what timeline you're on. These are the things that we can't really outrun. And it might be that you're experiencing one of these soul lessons in a particular context of your life, 
like whether it be career or finances or health. So the the lessons and the, the higher perspective guidance from the archangels is there and it's applicable for where you're currently at in your life. So the readings will often provide a higher perspective rather than, you know, a particular timeline. Yeah. So I, I often share in my psychic development groups that there was this real big shift with 2020. So prior to 2020, most people in the world with their free will choices were getting up and doing the same thing each week. They were kind of in the same job. They weren't moving around. The the timelines were pretty stable because there wasn't a whole lot of varied movement. And then when you have something like 2020 unfold and everyone's, it becomes really uncertain. And so people are having to make big decisions kind of out of nowhere, Um, you know, jobs were ending. The world was really rapidly changing and this instability meant that it would be really hard to have provided a psychic reading that predicts timelines and really specific outcomes into the future because what could have been the most um, likely timeline on the day of the reading could change the next day. Mm -hmm. So it is really risky now when we're in a world where people are moving about and change is still unfolding at, at such a rapid pace that if we were to attach on deadlines or when things are likely to happen, it also conflicts with our capacity to make um, soul choices and be aligned so that we can timeline shift, so that we can magnetize and attract our desires to us at a greater rate via our vibration. So, you know, there is much more fluidity in in timelines now. So the, the channel angel readings are really great because they're applicable across all timelines, but yeah, it's that higher level guidance about what's currently unfolding that you you may not be able to see for yourself. Yeah. I think that's so funny how you said people will ask a job. I'm sorry, ask a question about a job and, you know, the human part of us that so like so little of the human wants to trust in their own intuition that they go and get like an angel reading and it's just almost humorous that the angels are like, we're not going to tell you what's to come. We're just going to give you a higher perspective and open up your you know consciousness more to really what you already know and just being that support holding that space and I also think it's really interesting and I got goosebumps as you said how my readings can still apply to different timelines like I didn't actually know that until now that it's not so much a prediction it's more of a perspective Mm. and I can definitely see that because it it definitely feels like, you know, you can move through layers, you can move through lessons, soul lessons, but they always, unless you have completely learned the lesson, they, they pop up in different areas of life. They pop up in different ways, different shapes, different forms. And it makes sense why those readings that I've had from you in the past can still, you know, when I've got the intuitive nudge, listen to that recording listen to it and and it's what I need to hear. So I love that so much. And I love that it's just another way that people can almost tune into their intuition with you, right? Because they're just getting that perspective. It, it's so much about that, just tuning into what is available, which is super cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. When I do my um, in-person live uh, readings, which is a combination of the channeled angel guidance, but also my intuition, like, they just kind of want to sit down and have me tell them. And I'm like, no, 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 we're, we're going to open the space together. You know, I'm going to use some blue lotus oil. You're going to use some blue lotus oil. <laughs> I want you working with your intuition. Like we're a team here. So yeah. really empowering um, everyone to, to be able to, um, yeah, have the courage and the faith in their own choices and their own gift of free will choice that they can choose um, and do so in a way where they feel like, everything's empowering them to come back to themselves and trusting themselves. I love that intention there. And I feel like I obviously do very different work to you, but I always hold that same intention of empowering people to see that it's actually within you. It's not outside of you. And I know in the past I've had experiences where I was, you know, getting psychic readings regularly, like every six months or something. And in hindsight, again, the hindsight thing, I can look (laughs) back and see that getting that psychic reading actually wasn't supporting me because I was then putting like my human self was then thinking this is exactly how, well, this is exactly where I'm going to go. So it has to be exactly this way. And if anything, it disrupted my, my journey and my path to getting to where I was meant to be. And of course, everything happens for a reason. I truly believe that. And I believe that I had to have those 
So I like, go to those sessions, not trust in myself enough to then see that I can trust in myself, but yeah. just the, the Archangel readings, I think, and just that sort of work and empowering women and people to just trust in themselves is so much more, you see such faster results, I guess, because you're, you're changing your actual frequency to love yourself more, to trust in what is within you more. So of course that law of attraction is going to bring to you exactly that beautiful energy that you are then holding for yourself. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. And it's also this like recognition that everyone's intuition will speak to them in a different way. And so sometimes we think, oh, to be psychic, you have to be clairvoyant. It's all about seeing the future and we even use languaging like that. But for a lot of people, it's the clairsentience. So it's the the body that's supporting. It's like, oh, I I come across something and I get goosebumps. Um, I get that gut feeling. And so it can be sometimes that that it's not necessarily meditating or receiving some kind of vision, but, you know, trusting that our intuition is speaking to us in in a different language and it's more about not, oh, I don't have an an intuition that I can trust. It's, oh, I haven't quite learned how to understand that language yet and that's where the practice comes in because everyone is slightly different. Yeah. And, you know, I I feel like we've looped back to this so many times of just like, we have these expectations that like you just said, it has to be something we see, or it has to be something we feel. But I know myself in the past, I went through a phase of, I can't remember what the Claire one is for smell, but I went through this phase of like smelling. And I was just like, what is wrong with me? Like I was waking up to really intense, like dreams of like smelling incenses from when I was a kid and things like that. And it's like, I didn't even know that was a part of like a psychic sense. Right. And so people don't realize that. And I I think that's like a really cool point to like end this episode on is that no matter how your intuition communicates with you, it's not wrong. It's actually your own intuition connecting with you in a way that is going to land for you best. And once you begin to understand that we are all actually very different and just because, you know, this person has their intuition here and this person has their intuition here it doesn't mean that there's anything actually wrong with you with you I think that's like really important for people to remember yeah Yeah. absolutely absolutely thank you so much for coming on do you have any final words of wisdom before we wrap up this episode Ah, oh, I just feel like it's, you know, as as these timelines and the world are changing at such a rapid pace that I guess the piece of like highlight that I that I want to share is, you know, I had the luxury of learning this over, you know, 10 to 13 years where I, I got to get it wrong and, you know, really like meander with this. But since um, the, you know, that we're in this great awakening, you know, the, the work where I would be seeing a client and mentoring her now, she would assimilate an experience or a lesson in a space of two weeks where I was like, oh my God, that took me a year. And so there is like, this is prime time for rapid awakening, rapid acceleration in ascension, in vibration, in energy. So like, if you've ever had that feeling of like, oh, I I should probably like explore my intuition a little bit more. This is the time to do it. And you'll see great results with this, just this practice to taking the pressure off and having fun with it, playing with it and just working out how it all works for you. So yeah, now is the time. I love that so much. Could you please share where everyone can find you? I'm sure after listening to this, everyone's going to be jumping on those angel readings. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I do work in person on the Sunshine Coast, but the channeled angel readings um, are recorded. I also do the live readings. Um, I can do them via Zoom and energy healing I can do via distance as well. Um, And so my Instagram handle is at underscore moon underscore and underscore tide underscore so I run um sacred gatherings called moon and tide gatherings that's was my second is my second business um and yeah so I have two websites um katemanley.com.au for my one-on-one work and then moon and tide gatherings.com.au for my group work beautiful and of course I'll leave it all linked below for everyone to find you This was such an honor to have you on and such an incredible conversation. I had no doubt that it was just going to flow so beautifully and it did. I loved hearing 
more about your story and just how inspiring it is that when you just follow your intuition, no matter how it shows up in your body, it's always going to lead you to the right space. So I trust everyone listening got so much out of this too. And I'll see you all next week.